don't have a lot of self-love, even if you're in a relationship, you're still going to be unhappy. Hi guys, welcome back to another Women Talk. So today we'll be talking about just like relationships and like self-love. And um, I'm going to be talking today with my friend Ola. Hi there, my name is Ola. Uh, I'm a photographer slash video person or aspiring yeah. video person, I guess. Um, and yeah, we got some things that I want to um, share with you guys. I'm hoping that some of those things are going to improve your lives or maybe add something um, to the way you think about the world. Yeah, and then some good old food. <laughs> oh, we got this watermelon from yeah. uh, Trader Joe's. And it's super sweet and it's oh, they're so sweet. Oh, that's that's kind of perfect summer. Yeah, snack. It's kind of it's kind of funny because it's like ironic. That's a grainy. And we're having like watermelon inside, like, mm. but it's still good. Yeah, the weather in Chicago is not ideal, but we'll take it. I guess we should talk about like what we we're talking about before. The relationships. Yeah. Do uh, you want to start with? <clears throat> Oh, like the, the breakup? Because I don't. Is, is that too heavy? Is that too dark? Runs away in the corner. No, it's crazy because it's not yeah. as horrible as it like as yeah, a lot of people believe it to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I just want to talk about first, like just like the that. I don't know. It's interesting because after the last person I was with, the breakup, mm -hmm. like how I was telling you, like um, I felt that I was just like. A, looking at all the people that I was with and it's interesting because the first boyfriend I had was never my true love. Yeah. Um, like the last person I was with like was my true like my first love. And it's kinda how, interesting. How old were you when you I was the first I was pretty young. I was like in the first relationship. I was fourteen. That's really young. Yeah. I haven't even my first kiss was when I was seventeen. Yeah. Like, so, so that was more of a friendship back then? Yeah, honestly, we actually were really good friends. Mm -hmm. And we are we are still kind of friends now, but we don't really talk much a lot. Only sometimes, yeah. like if it's birthday. Or like, we're like, we're still like friends on Facebook and stuff, and I'm like, oh, congrats and stuff. Um, but we were just, we just clicked really well, like we're really good friends. Mm -hmm. And I remember we, we would tell each other, like, we're not going to like date each other. Like I told him, like, I don't want to date you because we're really good friends. And he's like, oh yeah, me too. And then, for some reason, <laughs> like during that time, like I think he just started liking me. And then there were a lot of people around him that were like, yeah, you should act around and stuff. And I think it created kind of like pressure on. I mean, I think on me because I felt like I had to say yes. And I was just like, yeah, why not? But at the same time, like I didn't really have a drive to like <clears throat> date him in general. <coughs> I didn't really like. But I didn't mean, um, I don't know, I feel like I learned a lot from it. <laughs> it was, and it's it's funny because like it wasn't like the, like I lasted like two years in a relationship, but it wasn't that. Like yeah, I lasted. Never... <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good way of putting, That's, yeah. putting it. I lasted, it was hard, it was a struggle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. See, <laughs> let's reverse <That's>... those words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a very interesting choice of words though. Like it's it's almost like subconsciously, you know that wasn't a thing for you. Yeah. Um, and I get it. I think we, we've all been in relationships that like deep in our hearts or not even that deep. Like we knew that it wasn't a thing for us. Yeah. Like my first relationship was like that as well. Where I would be with a guy um, who was just a great friend to me and who had a lot of uh, patience with me um, in approaching me and, the, and talking to me. And who knows how that relationship will, will go had I not meet another person who I felt a stronger mm -hmm. you know connection with um, and I broke up with my boyfriend at the time but um, there is that need or this feeling of hey I have to be in a relationship because like 90% of my peers are dating someone and all of a sudden like if you're not do the same thing you blame it on yourself and you yeah. start wondering, you start questioning yourself, like, is there something wrong with me or is there something wrong with society? Because honestly, 
can you really have a relationship at the age of 14? Yeah. You know? Is it really more than a friendship when you're when you're that that young? I feel like people aren't ready, like oh. in like in deciding what they want in a person. And I definitely was not ready because I didn't like like it was something that I never even thought about, like <laughs> Because I just like enjoy just being on my own and doing my own thing mm -hmm. and it wasn't anything something that I was like craved or really like y'all yeah, probably be like oh yeah that guy's cute and stuff but I won't really be like oh yeah I'm gonna, I want to date that guy <laughs> I'll just be doing my own thing um, you know, I have so many friends who you know they start dating when they're 14 or even younger and every moment of their life up until now and you know right now I'm 27 so say you know 10 consecutive years they have been with someone there hasn't been a period of time where they were left on their own which in my thinking honestly it's really harmful to um to your like personal development because if you're with someone you don't like any 14 you don't really have time to think about working on yourself, improving mm -hmm. yourself as a person, you kind of invested in this other um, guy that's, you know, a part yeah. of your life. Yeah, so for me, I think the time that you have on your own is the most valuable time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are terrified to be on their own, but they don't see the benefits of it. It's almost like you know how people always like they struggle to be happy, they struggle to have this like perfect life. No. It's never perfect. Like why would you even yeah. strive to like have that? I think you, even if you have like that right partner, it's never gonna be perfect. No. Like just you guys will fight, there will be things that will happen that are not gonna be pleasant. <laughs> yeah, it's just a part of life. It's like, hey, there's a day but there's a night. There is you know, the waves come and go, like things change all the time you can't really expect like, nothing you know lasts forever as cliche as it sounds constant thing the only constant thing is the change and I, I think realizing that has taught me a lot and it took the pressure of, of a lot of things yeah. if you start dating someone you like <sighs> you know if you think about the worst thing or like you, you Going in, you expect that it's not gonna last. Yeah, it's gonna make it easier <laughs> for you if it's if it you know if it ends suddenly. And it's not pessimistic. I think it's going different into like a relationship that's not gonna last. Well, if you like if you that like mindset, is that what you mean? Yeah, in a way. Yeah. Or maybe maybe not not to say that like, it's not gonna last, but like, just like not. I feel like I know what you're trying to say. Like not going putting so much pressure on the idea. That yeah, or, or you know considering that things can change between you guys because yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people they go into a relationship and they they're like hey you're the one like i'm gonna marry you i'm gonna stay with you for the yeah. rest of my life and that's you know this is that phrase that's being repeated on and on and like by so many people like this is the one for the rest of my life you can't really predict what's gonna happen mm -hmm. um next tuesday yeah. <laughs> not to mention like yeah. you know the rest of your life, like your feelings might change, mm -hmm. his feelings might, might change and honestly, do you really want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you, you know what I mean? Because like you can stay in a relationship but if neither of you are happy, like what's the point? Yeah. What is the point? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I feel like it's not even like, like you guys aren't even growing together. Yeah. So it's like going the opposite way. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, go, um, I remember in my first relationship, <laughs> um, I didn't really, I think most of the time I didn't enjoy it was because the guy I was with, he was just very, um, attached to me. Is he gonna watch it? <laughs> I don't know, hi! <laughs> if he does, like, I mean, I, I feel like I made that clear, maybe I didn't, but hi! We're still good friends. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's self-reflective. It's not. Yeah, it's not like or on him. Exactly. It's just like one reflecting on it, <laughs> or even more so on on, on yourself because it's yeah. not. It's not to say that True. he made all the mistakes in the relationship, but like you were, you were learning still. So you yeah. were new to it, and you know, you're just kind of considering yeah. things that you've done. 
And I remember he was just very, uh, he was very overprotective and very, um, like, uh, like he would get jealous a lot. Did you like it at first? No. When you do those things, I'll just be so confused. And I think it was just because I didn't know what, how to respond or what to think about it, and I didn't even yeah. reflect on it. I was just so confused. Like I was so confused why he was acting like that because I never experienced a relationship before, and like this, I couldn't understand why this person was so jealous of me. Like mm -hmm. and then and also like I felt like they they lost my trust right away, and I never really reflected on that. Like I remember like I, I was um, cross country team in my high school, and I remember he would tell my friends to watch over me in case I was like with other guys and my friends told me this and I was kind of like shocked that he would do that because we never even had anything wrong it was like kind of the beginning well, not the beginning but like we've been dating for a while but I never had done anything to lose his trust like he would he will always just try to buy my love he was just like buying me stuff all the time it's just very materialistic and um towards me and I like told them not like I don't know I was just explaining to him like you don't need to do all these things for me and yeah. I don't know, I just felt uncomfortable. You, you know, I, I feel like um, maybe he had a misconception of what relationship yeah. is like or should be like and you know, those are things when you're like 17, 18, 19 and you're in a relationship, all you know, you, you've you learned probably from movies, like there's no personal experience that you're Oh, yeah, your, your, basically like your relationship parents. and parents or whatnot and he, you know like if he's jealous for me jealousy is a sign of someone having a really serious um, insecurity. insecurities Insecure, yeah. um, issues because if he's okay with himself if he really loves himself and you've never given him a reason to be jealous there is no way that he should display, and, you know, this type of behavior towards you because you haven't earned it, you know. Um, it's just not fair to you. But, you know, he's just not feeling too good with yeah. on, on his own with himself. I remember, I remember, because um, I broke it off. And it was pretty hard actually breaking it off. Because, like, when the, I did it the first time, it, it didn't turn out that great. <laughs> and, yeah, I, he, like, got pretty sad. Oh, and we were still like together. I feel like I was just so young. I didn't really have like the yeah, power yeah, to yeah. kind of just like, well, like if you don't want to be in this relationship, like don't be in it. Like you have the power to say that. Yeah. And I remember like I don't even know how much months it passed until I finally like broke up with him again. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it was more easier because he's like, oh yeah, I saw this coming and stuff. Uh -huh. okay. But I remember just after like we broke up, I felt so free. Like I just felt so like liberated. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I was just, like nice. doing my own thing, and then like there'll be times sometimes where I'll be like, oh, I feel really bad, like did I make the right choice? But I was like, no, I think it's just like the feeling of like just going through all that and then just yeah. reflecting. But I felt so like I don't know, I felt like it was just like time for me to get back into being me and just like getting in the groove and just like doing my yeah, thing. Yeah, sure. You know, I I feel like people should. Um, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, especially like breaking up is like never gonna be easy. Yeah. This is this is this is a conversation that you don't want to have, <clears throat> but this is a conversation that you have to have in order to, to to move on. You know, breaking up with someone or telling them something that makes you really uncomfortable because you know that they're gonna hurt sucks. All right, it does. But at the end of the day, like you might find yourself being in a relationship that you're not not happy about. Yeah. And like, what's what's worse, you know? Um, I don't know. Um, honestly, like, I think I the one time I broke up with someone. As far as I remember, I went out like the next day with my friend, and we were partying all night. But like the very moment, like telling him and like you know, going separate ways. That evening, I was sad. <laughs> Next morning, yeah. I was like, okay, I gotta, you know, gotta get back on. Get back on my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it, it is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Got no time to waste. <laughs> um, but I also feel that it's absolutely crucial for you not to jump from one relationship right into oh, another. Yeah. Like, take this time to heal, even if you are the one 
you know, breaking up with someone, you still should take some time. Yeah. Self-reflect. If you weren't happy in that first relationship, what can you do to make the next relationship better? You know? Yeah. Or if someone has broken up with you, don't take it too personally. Don't think like it's been all your fault and you're all not good enough for people and you're gonna you know stay lonely uh, for the, and sad for the rest of your life <laughs> like try to think think about you know, things that you can you can improve especially like if you're the one being broken up with like do some do some work on your yeah. on your own happiness where you don't have to depend on anyone to have this joy for life like this is the most empowering thing that you can do for yourself yeah and I, def I definitely like agree on that i feel like i actually just like went through that i feel like before the last person i was with there were other people i was with and like it wasn't even like a lot of people it was just like two like people but one of like one of the other person like the one of the two like i didn't even date that long we just dated for like a month mm -hmm. and like the other person like they were we never dated but we were, it was just like a person that was like really on and off, but it, they were just very, very toxic. Yeah. And I think because it's just like going from like that one money relationship and kind of feel like sad, but like I still had like enough, like I feel like love for myself and then going to the other person. I feel like mm -hmm. that very toxic person, it's just like off and on. It's just like how they were living their lifestyle was just so um, effective to like myself. Mm -hmm. That left me very like, um, I guess broken and just like um, kind of like not knowing like my identity and then I feel like during that time like when they I was away from that person I was like healing mm -hmm. I jumped into like the last person I was with and I it's like my con my conscious knew like I need to but I was just like no like we should just be friends and just really still heal because you're not ready yet I feel like I was carrying a lot of like baggage from like especially like just the last other person, like the toxic person and all that, I, and like I, it, it's just like left me having a lot of like insecurities, and then when that person did break up with me, I felt like very, <laughs> I felt even more like lost, and more like confused in my like identity and like who I was, and the toxic relationship all of a sudden it took me, like I would say like probably like two years, I guess like the two, two like, yeah, yeah, because it was like in 2016, yeah, and it like in the end of 2016 mm -hmm. and like the start of 2017, so kind of like almost like two years. Yeah, because I didn't really give myself time to reflect when I carried it to the last relationship. I was just at basically with that same energy, like doing that, yeah. and not really like I don't know. I just didn't feel like I was acting the way I would act. It just felt like I was acting like the last person I was with, yeah. and. Like that's not like my, I know that's not like my own intuition to like yeah. do that. It's crazy because like these days I, I go out and I see people. But if you are to listen to yourself, like truly listen to yourself, 99% of the time, like I already know whether or not it's worth my time. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I feel I like I do and I feel like sometimes I just even do it and I'm just like, like, I, I'm not even listening to myself. I'm just like, like, do you really want to go out Laura? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I'm like, like you know, was, yeah. I, I like going out, but at the same time, and then I like, to, like talk, talking to people and whatnot, but it's almost like I kind of give myself a permission to hang out with those people, but yeah. not really, um, not really considering like going further with that like yeah. only as like we can we can see each other as friends we can there can even be some sort of physicality to it mm -hmm. but i'm not gonna go too far like there is a line that i have yeah. that like i feel comfortable with and I'm, I'm for the most part I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna cross it because i know that would make me feel comfortable yeah. but <clears throat> it's like it's almost like a a curse sometimes <laughs> yeah. to be so in tune with yourself <laughs> because is, you see yeah. those people and you're like okay this is like swipe swipe to the left <laughs> swipe to the left because I know that that's not gonna happen um, because you just you, you just know like some yeah. things you're not gonna like if there's not 
that flame at first it's not gonna come out out of nowhere later on you know um, and it's it's a little heartbreaking because it's like all right well I guess I have to meet a lot of people to actually find the one that I really really like but at the same time I'm not getting very pessimistic about it because I would like to be in a relationship yeah but there's no point in being in a relationship if like if it's not working for you you know if it's like not giving you what you need out of this relationship so I was okay with like seeing a lot of people and uh, just enjoying the time as like in a social sense more mm -hmm. so than in a romantic sense um, but I think I think we should all like honestly like, what, what do you even what do you even think about like sites like tinder or uh, oh, I don't out of social like things like that right yeah I actually don't I, I, I look very down upon I do have friends that have like the arm relationships because of it but yeah. for me like I, I look down upon it because I don't I don't want to like look be looking for people like if I'm out you know like I'll more rather be like in the moment and just attract someone in like my own time than mm -hmm. like look at what this person like has and like what their hobbies are and stuff like that uh, like it's almost like, hey, this is this is the profile that I've created, and this is the image, the ideal image that I have yeah. of myself that I'm gonna like sell to you. It's almost yeah. like selling a product, you know. Yeah. And those are the things that I want to present, and all the rest I'm just gonna hide and yeah. not tell you about. And it seems really fake. Plus, it really seems a little desperate to me. Like yeah. if if you looking for someone through online sources and I know that a lot of people say hey we have so little time to actually interact with each other and this is the only way that I can meet up with someone now, honestly if something is going to happen it's going to happen whether or not you have a account on tinder yeah you know it's just like I personally wouldn't like to be associated with someone who created that account yeah you know, it's that's what we like look for because it like to me it's an indication that that person doesn't have enough self love for himself. Yeah, that that's what I think too. And I think and I think sometimes it's just like I'm like oh my god that's like so like toxic to me. I don't yeah. think about it in a way. And then like I don't know I've had, I have had like people that I like like in my work area like offer me that. And I'm just like no I don't do that. <laughs> like it's just like not something that I would, like will feel from my intuition like. Like no, that's not my thing. And like I feel like how you're saying like it's like desperate kind of. It's not like something I'm like yeah. looking for. It's just you know I'm just gonna do my own thing. Yeah, I mean I don't. Desperate is such a pejorative word. Yeah, I, I guess don't, like I don't want to down downgrade all the people who do it because yeah. I I know that there are worthy people there. What I'm saying is that those people have not taken enough of time to self reflect. I yeah. think I think that there's still a lot of work they have to do with your, with themselves. Like to really feel happy because if you feel happy, you're like, you're open. You're like in a position yeah. that you are or I am where you're like, I would like to maybe be in a relationship, but it is not priority for me at the moment. And if something is going to happen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. I have an open heart for it, mm -hmm. an open mind, but I am not desperately like putting all of my energy into like trying to attract someone else. Yeah. Um, because if it's bound to happen, it's gonna happen one way or another, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, call it destiny, call it whatever you wanna call it, but I don't think there's any need to, like, to putting yourself out there. Yeah. To, like, to attract someone. Yeah, I agree. And having said that, I, I, I used to have a account on one of those dating websites when I was, like, 19 or 20. Um, I was so all of it different back then. Oh my gosh, so different. Sometimes it's almost like recalling a a different past life. <laughs> yeah. It's like why why would I? But I have a better understanding right now of why I would do certain things. You know, back then I I really I wanted someone to validate me as a person. I didn't know that I was lacking. Um, you know, self-reflection, or that I wasn't really growing as much as a as an individual as I should have, maybe. 
but you know you can't really be too harsh on yourself when you're yeah. 19 when you're 20 you're still you're so really young. young and it's yeah. it's like you have to i believe that you have to make certain mistakes to like to grow learn from like, them yeah. and it's like some things you can learn about in books some things you can learn about from people who have better experience but then there's a whole bunch of things that you have to screw up on your own you know yeah. and then just learn from that and it's just a part of life i think i actually i am most appreciative of the like the negative things that have happened in my mm -hmm. life you know just because they really those are the things that really shape my character you mm -hmm. know those are the things that i like really made me who i am right now and yeah i think i think back in the day i just i didn't have as much love for for myself and I didn't appreciate spending a lot of time on myself and um, sometimes I'm like you see like the last time I cried was like out of happiness you know because it's like oh my god life is so amazing like I can't take it <laughs> um, which is a crazy thing to, to, to say I think it's like oh wow this is probably like my biggest accomplishment in my, in my life to like yeah. say something like that you know uh, whether whether you have money or whether you or not or whether you have a partner or not, like damn, if you feel like crying because life's so good, like I think yeah. you're doing something right. So, Ooh, let's get high of crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might not have all the answers to the questions that I have, but and that's, I think that's okay though. Yeah, like, right. For the last part, we're just going to incorporate kind of like some stuff that we have done in our self-love journey. So you said there were a lot of things that you haven't mentioned, other, yeah. other things that you've been doing. So what were the things that you incorporated into your lifestyle to like celebrate yourself really? Yeah. What, what is the self-love that you've given yourself? I try just, um, I've been trying just to go back and do the things that I like love yeah like drawing and just like um yoga and just like and then also like doing doing it just like knowing that i'm doing this like for myself like journaling a lot of like affirmations a lot and then just like journaling a lot of like um just like negative thoughts i had and then like next to it like the um, a positive affirmation for that. So, like if I ever thought of that, like saying the opposite oh, nice. of that. Okay. And then I remember I was just I would always just like think of like certain like little quotes and stuff that would come in my mind. I was just like journal it down and stuff. Uh, I just felt like a, it kind of like a metamorphosis, kind of like a new me being and stuff. I think um, journals or diaries, call them however you want. Um, they are very important, just because. Um, I think there's a different uh, thought process that yeah. you go through whether w when you talk about things or versus when you start writing them down. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like sometimes certain things um, reveal themselves in a different way yeah. when you actually put words down on, 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 the, on the paper and it's like you know, it's in a physical form, you know, like your emotion is in a physical mm -hmm. form and you have to face it. So it's, um, it's, it's a really good way of dealing with certain things, um, or getting over certain, mm -hmm. you know, problems, issues. I've done a lot of that, um, as well. Also, um, writing down your dreams and trying to figure oh, yeah. out the dreams That's, yeah. as well. Like I've never, I've read a ton on, on the subject and I still don't feel like I know anything. But um, mm -hmm. I always try to like discover like, and that's totally unrelated. But I used to have this like recurring dream of, of a tornado, and it's been following me like probably for the past five years in like all sorts of really intense forms. Um, like I would honestly have this dream like every other night. Mm -hmm. there, there were days or times, you know, and it would keep coming back. It would keep coming back, and it was always at home. Mm -hmm. Usually my parents were around and it was always like coming from the same direction um, and I was always like terrified to like face it. Like, it was always when you lived at home? Yeah, that? back home, mm -hmm. back back in Poland. Um, and you know, I've been writing it down and every every time I had this dream and like still had no idea what, what, what it was about and why it would come and keep coming back. Actually, you know, I told someone else about this dream and um, 
he helped me realize what was the, the meaning of this dream and like ever since because I had my own theories yeah and like the most obvious thing never came up to me that I basically felt guilty for like leaving them yeah. in, at home um, and ever since he said that to me like hey what what if you're just like feeling bad because you feel like you abandoned them and you, you let them yeah. and ever since he said that I'm like never had this dream again Wow, crazy yeah. thing. So like dreams are so powerful. Well, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching us and listening to our topics. Like we're hoping that you guys like learn or get anything out of it. That's always the key. And it, um, it just serves like conversation. Just like listening to other people's experience. So it's not really to like pinpoint anything. It's just like, it's just talking conversation and yeah. watching us eat watermelon <laughs> and food. <laughs> I'm planting chips. They're really good. Yeah. Shout out to Trader Joe's. Yeah, Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Great watermelon and <laughs> plantain chips. Good stuff. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Bola? Um, you know, feel free to like reach out with any questions to yeah. us. I'm more than happy to always like. I always share your Instagram too. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to like look at all of like photography or more work, I'll like link her Instagram below. Yay. Yeah. You guys go follow her up. Yeah. yeah. But thank you. I'll see you guys in my next video. Keep loving yourself. Damn. Self love. Alright.